Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's program. Let's get cozy with author Susan Branch. My name is Helen Liu and I am the Programming and Partnerships Manager at Cary Library. I'd like to welcome my co-host and colleague, Nicole. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to thank the Cary Library Foundation. Their support enables us to bring programs like today's event to you. This program is being recorded and will be posted to the library's YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please submit them to the Q&A or put them in chat. Any of you who are fans of our guest this evening, and for those of you who are meeting her for the first time, allow me to introduce you. Susan Branch is the self-taught artist and author of the 14 best-selling Heart of the Home Lifestyle books, all published by Little Brown and Company. From her studio overlooking her picket garden fence in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, Susan writes and paints about the home arts of cooking, gardening, sewing, family, best friends, entertaining, and the little things that make life sweet and cozy. Welcome, Susan. We're so pleased to have you join us today. Thank you, Helen. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Susan. Good <laughs> to have you here with us. We're very oh. excited this evening. Um, so Susan, welcome. Um, I'd like to start by just going back to the beginning. Your Heart of the Home Lifestyle series are bestsellers. What or who inspired you to write and why did you choose to start with cookbooks? Well, you know, it's been a long journey and, you know, I actually was just thinking today that, uh, that my whole life has been, you know, sort of, I grew up in the books because, you know, you do then what you knew how to do. And then when you know better, you do better. Well, that's true about, you know, as we're getting older and better. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so we're, you know, we're, when I wrote the first book, uh, you know, I never thought I would be writing a book. I didn't even paint my first picture until I was 30 years old. So uh, it was a real surprise. Everything has been a surprise, actually, to tell you the truth. But uh, I was inspired to do it because I love to cook. That helped, of course, when you're going to write a cookbook. And also, I had a really good, wonderful friend who was a few years older than me. So I thought of her as being the smart one. And, uh, and she thought it would be good for me, thought I should write a cookbook, combine my art and my recipes. Because what I had done is I had given her for her wedding present, a recipe box with filled with cards that I had hand lettered and watercolored. And, uh, and she loved it. So she thought that that is what I should make into a cookbook. Well, they really do look so much like the recipes in the books. And so, uh, and so that was, she was my first inspiration, but you know, I thought, you know, her name is Jane. I just figured, you know, she's just being nice, whatever, that's not gonna happen. But then the real inspiration came when all of a sudden I found myself getting a divorce and my whole life was taken up by that. I wasn't painting, I wasn't doing anything. I was in California and I had to leave. I just had to escape at least for a while. So I came out to Martha's Vineyard to, uh, because I had always wanted to see what it was like to have seasons having grown up in California. I just want, and so it was coming, it was gonna be March. So I was gonna have March, April, May, and go back in June. So I was gonna have three seasons really, cause you know, March is yeah. actually winter. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, so, so I, I, what ended up happening is I, I accidentally bought a little house. I was, uh, shown a very one bedroom, tiny little cottage in the woods. And I, I thought, you know, well, this is the cutest house in the world. I must have it. And so I bought it really without doing any kind of, like I didn't have the heater checked. I didn't have anything. I just said, I'll take it the very first day I saw it. It was meant to be. And that's when I found out I was actually moving to Martha's Vineyard for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Those so, risks were worth taking. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it turned out that it was. And then all of a sudden, of course, I was gonna have to do something with the rest of my life. I, I, it took me a little while to get acclimated. So it took me about three years to really and I finally decided I'm just going to try and do this. I'm going to try and write a book. And 
And I just, you know, uh, I had a lot of reasons why I couldn't do it. And I, of course, because that's what you think of first. And, you know, first off, I didn't know what size to make it. That that stopped me for probably a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just, it was just more and more of, of th that kind of thing and of discoveries. And, and I was also in the process, I was 34. So I was in the process of trying to figure out who I was. And, and, and of course that is a big, big, big job when you really put your mind to it because suddenly not having my family, my friends, my hometown, my life, nothing, all of a sudden I'm here. Well, without those things, you don't really have very much of a selfness. Those no, that was really brave. Well, it was an accident, but it was, it turns out, <laughs> so it was, I thought, I thought it was just, ah, no problem. That's, that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and when I found that basically I was like in boot camp and I'd been stripped of all personality and shaved bald, um, <laughs> I, I decided that I, I started really putting my mind to figuring out what was, what I was going to do. And I kept, I looked for a book. I looked for the book that said, here's how to make a life. Here's what you do. Because I could see that other people had done it. Why, why shouldn't it be me? And, um, but, you know, there was no book, which is a lot of the reason I wrote Martha's Vineyard, Isle of Dreams and uh, Fairy Tale Girl. But there was this book in the house. Oh, there was this book. And this I, book ugh, Bible left behind. <laughs> right. I mean, there was my education right there. And it, it changed my life. You know, I started going through these. Um, I put stars next to the quotes that I liked the best. After I got done with this one, I went and got more and more and more. I used to ride the train back and forth to California. So I would take my quote books with me and just read all the way across. It takes three days and just put stars next to all the ones I liked most. And so, um, you know, so this is a huge inspiration and slowly but surely between reading this and then while reading this, I learned about different uh, people that I had never really known anything about. Like I didn't know that much about Plato at the time or Socrates or even Mark Twain. And when I would read uh, a, a quote over and over again that made so much sense to me, I get curious about the person and I would start reading biographies and learned, and between the biographies and the quotes, there is where I figured out how to get what I wanted out of life. So that's one reason, obviously, that I'm writing. That's wonderful. This book right now, and this is going to be called Distilled Genius. It's a mm. book of quotes. It's the secrets of life. It's everything that I learned. And the interesting fun part about what this, these books did for me, I'll just show you just a little bit of what it's gonna look like. Ooh, That's just ooh, all wow. the quotes that I've written over the years. Fabulous. It's a 50 year collection of things that I've learned and just the best, most wonderful stuff. So all I do all day long is you know, figure out, oh, but, and at the end of each chapter, there's two empty pages for everybody to put their own favorite quotes in. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna be available. a blast of a book. I am really loving it. And what another thing quote books did for me, so, you know, I'm. that's what's so exciting is they open, I became so interested in, uh, in, in these different people and how they live their lives. And, really, they're all just normal human beings. They were all babies at one time. They all had to figure it out for themselves. They all stood on shoulders of people that came before them. They all had heroes of their own. And so they, that, you know, that was wonderful. And now so far we've been to the homes of Rudyard Kipling, Beatrix Potter, William Morris, Mark Twain, Shakespeare, Jane Austen, Abigail Adams, Louisa May Alcott. We've just gone, it's just been part of what that book, you just never know where your inspiration is going to come from, where it all of a sudden opens an entire world to you. And that's, you know, that's 
really what what happened for me. That's fabulous. When will the book be be coming out? Um, be published. I am just about there. I mean, I have a big preface to write, and it's mostly written. Um, and I have, uh, um, you know, I have the cover to do and and some different things like that. But I'm hoping I'll we'll have it in June. I'm hoping it'll be, uh, you know, at the studio. Wonderful. Nice. So yeah, that's, that's the that's plan. Something nice to look forward to for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Definitely. it's got a little story to it too. So that's going to be fun. So did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, you did. And um, that also answers one of the questions I had um, that I was going to pose later, but we can talk about it now. I noticed in reading your books, there's always these wonderful quotes just placed so nicely and appropriately in every single section. I mean, so obviously you have a book to draw from. How do you remember all these different quotes and where you might put them in um, while you're writing? Well, I do remember them. Uh, that's the, I think that's kind of an interesting thing after all these years that I do, I do remember them um, because they're wonderful. You know, they really are, you know, um, seek not outside yourself heaven is within is like one of my very favorite ones because that was the truth that's where you know that's where all all the secrets are and so it's it's really easy for me not you know to to just have them to tell the story right I use them on my blog too and uh and when you when you get information like this like what you're really reading is an affirmation or something put into words that you couldn't do yourself. You couldn't Absolutely. say it yourself. You may not yes. even have known that you thought that, but it, the minute felt you felt that, that exactly. you recognized yeah. it as your own. So when I wrote my first book, I just, you know, I had to immediately start putting quotes in there because, you know, it's one thing if I say it, it's a whole nother thing if Louise May Alcott says it. It just is. And, and it will, and, it, you know, it's, and when you read something that is so completely up to date from 400 BC, you just get the human connection that goes with all of these. And people. now more than ever. So and now more right than now. ever than we ever yeah. need. It. Yes, we do. Yeah. And, and what it is to be human. What is it to be human? That is the, the one of the questions I think about all the time because I mean, and what is it to be, watch out for this big word, civilized? <laughs> <laughs> uh, becoming a thing of the past. <laughs> what does that mean for a responsibility for each of us to do our part uh, to c- contribute to the civilization? So, you know, uh, because it does take a village. <laughs> it does. You, we, it's not good if, if some people don't believe in it and you know, and if, if some people do. So we all have to like, you know, think about doing our part, I think so. Anyway, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. but uh, yeah, the quotes, the quotes, they just, they became, and it's interesting because you, we talked earlier, um, Helen, about the, about the, uh, the handwriting thing and how, uh, how, you know, what came first, the painting and the handwriting and so forth. And the handwriting really, really came first. I, I thought I, I would get out something to show to you. This, I was nine years old. I didn't really do it this way. I'll show you. Well, I'll show you this first because you can see my handwriting on there. And I am writing, I love you in all different kinds of script at That's nine so years sweet. old. sweet. Yes, I love that. Isn't that, that was so sweet. And you know, my mother was very good about putting things in my baby book. So Kelly, who works for me, I gave her what I laid this out differently. I'll show you in a minute how it really came. And then, and then she made this for me, but it came from this. So this is a Mother's Day card that I, I gave to my mom when I was nine. And it's pretty interesting. It goes like this. Oh. And then it goes, and there's those two lovebirds. Goes like this. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. And then <laughs> it 
it goes like this. That's the top of it. That what full thought at that age? It, My. And, then, and then it goes like this. So it's a Mother's Day card to contend with. But in the corner here, <laughs> you see all of the. And so Kelly took the artwork from here and, you know, mostly these and put it together in that little card for me. But that's really beautiful. Yeah. I thought you would like to see that. So yeah, the, the handwriting definitely came first. <laughs> long, actually long before um, the art came. This is my first art, some of my first art, which, you know, this is the one I wanna take to have analyzed to find out what's wrong with me. Because I just don't, <laughs> I just think that there's this right, right brain, left brain problem going on on this thing. So. <laughs> At least all the fingers are there. Maybe if you extra <laughs> add the toes. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't paint my first picture till I was thirty. I just never knew I could do it. So that's why I encourage everyone to give it give it a try. You just don't know. You you know this. You go from this to painting. You know to painting something. You if you if you do this, you don't think you can paint. So. Yeah. That's why you have to try if you're interested in doing something. Absolutely. Like and did you have, um, so you just kind of started doing your lettering and then doing the painting as you went along and that kind of like helped you to develop the books as you went along or is it more of like you wrote the words and then you kind of doodled on the side? Yeah. Well, the way that I did it is I, you know, I didn't know how to do it. So the way I did it is I got a piece of paper. It was a Bristol board paper and I drew lines a quarter of an inch across because I knew I was going to write and I knew I was going to draw because I had painted paintings. I'd started painting paintings at 30 and then I had moved to, uh, I'd started the book at around 30 I'm going to say 36 or 37. So I had a few years of painting to practice. And then I, and then I started writing the books later on. And, uh, and so I knew I was going to write an illustrated. I knew I was going to write it and illustrated. I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't know. I really wanted, I, I didn't plan to put it in my handwriting. I had actually thought that it would be typed, but then, you know, I had an IBM Selectric back then. This is around 1984-ish, five-ish, and it was in the basement. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to take this Bristol board and stick it into the typewriter and type a few words and then get it out and paint a watermelon and then put it back in? And, and no. I, so I decided I would handwrite it. And if the publisher, if there ever was a publisher, wanted it, they would they would uh, you know they would have to put it in print themselves if they wanted to, and otherwise the handwriting was good for me because you know recipe cards and handwritten yeah. letters and yeah. it made sense that it was I always liked handwriting and and so yeah so that's what I did I just started uh, you know writing and drawing I my very first page was a page about apples and you know. Um, so it was about, it was called apple season. I remember doing it and a bunch of apples across and what they're best for, for pie or for whatever. And um, so, uh, and then I just did one page at a time. Cookbooks are a really nice way to start writing books because it gives you, it gave me, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, it gave me strength. I don't know what the right word is. It gave me, because I, uh, I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, you know, I, and so if I just did one page at a time. It's encouragement. Page, yeah. For you to keep going. I, I yeah. could just, you know, do something. It was better than doing nothing. And so that's what I was, you know, and as they get, came, as I did more and more of them, they looked more like a book. I started writing in them. I would write little stories about my garden, little stories about, um, you know, uh, Christmas presents and things. And um, my publisher, which was Little Brown at the time, never said, don't do it. 
And so uh, I feel, but they never said anything. They never really said, we like it. Well, they said they liked the book, no question. But as far as that writing was concerned, um, you know, for years I'd kept diaries. That's the only, and written tons of letters. Yeah, you too? Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, and it's a great, it's diaries are a great yeah, way to get they are. another great way to get to know yourself one way or mm -hmm. the other. And I just burnt all mine. Have you burnt yours yet? No, not yet. I might. <laughs> what does that mean? I, yes, I, didn't really burn them. I shredded them. I decided that I'm all grown up now. And those books were to help me grow up. Now I'm grown up and I really have told my story the way I want it told. And I am an idiot in those diaries. And I know my brothers and sisters <laughs> have a heyday with it if I, if I should go away. And so I just got, but I kept I kept like, I kept my very first, I kept my good ones. Like I kept this one. This is okay, the original so that's good, first, good, good. first diary I did nice. in England. And yes. I, kept, I kept the important ones, but most of them, all the love, falling in love things with, with uh, my ex, that's all gone. <laughs> Cathartic. That's, and yeah. you know what I did? I actually shredded it. And then for Christmas, I said, hey, him and his wife, uh, cups. I sent this one and I sent the, um, the uh, winter one and I used the shredded diaries as the stuffing for the book. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, you're giving me ideas. <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I loved it and he loved it and she loved it and it was, it was good. It was a good, he was finally set free because he used to always say to me, I know, I know you have the diaries. <laughs> I could always it's be written right. down. It's written, it's written down. down. It's I have true. proof. Yeah. yeah. And well, I'm so, I'm so glad that you decided not to use the IBM Selectric and to write <laughs> them out because it lends so much to the books that you're writing. It, it gives you that cozy feeling that we keep talking about. Right. And um, I know you had talked about when you first moved to Martha's Vineyard, you were trying to find some self-help books. And I think we all like self-help books because we're hoping that someone is going to tell us what to do with ourselves. Yeah. But in a way, your books also tell us what to do because the quotes are so inspiring in a way. They really are. And um, they help make us feel that we're not the only ones that have this thought in our mind. And that's what I love so much about the books. They're very comforting. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're reading about a situation and then there's a quote there that someone else has the same feeling as you do. And it's just positive affirmation. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was a very huge help for me. And I love being able to, you know, pass that on. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it just, just been a, a wonderful thing. And that's why I think this quote book is going to be, it's going to be two books because I couldn't, I can't get them all in one. It's going to be at least two. So two, two, everybody's happy with two. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> happy with two. Well, we have the better it is, I think, you know, so <laughs> I don't want to leave that's anything better. out. So all all right. those subjects. And, so. and so you've written um, your first books about cooking and then all, you also write about gardening and sewing, all those things that um, we all enjoy. Um, what about writing those that you love? Is it um, a feeling that you're sharing something that you love so much? What is it about writing about those different types of um, home arts? Well, you know, when I was growing up, I had, you know, I was lucky. I had a wonderful childhood. I'm the oldest of eight kids. And uh, my mom was very young when she had me, she had me at 17. And then she had my brother at, uh, at 19 and no, no, at 18. My brother's only 13 months uh, younger than me. And then the next one, you know, just, they just came. Yeah. So we, I had a new baby coming into the house every two years, the whole time I was growing up and it was me and then four boys and then three little girls. And so the boys uh, and me and my mother, you see, we, I had, she needed help, obviously. Yeah. And so that's what I was, I was, and I loved helping her and I learned I, I just loved everything about home. I loved it as a child. I, you know, I 
just loved the cooking. I helped her cook. I made all the cookies and desserts for the family. I love taking care of the babies and giving them baths. And I, you know, and doing it with her and hanging clothes on the line. And she taught me how to knit and sew. I sewed all my own clothes by the time I was in the eighth grade. Wow. And it was, uh, it was just a very domestic household. My parents were so young and so into it that like uh, what they would do in the summers is take all of us in the station wagon and the tent and the cereal boxes, the pillows and the sleeping bags and take us up to, uh, up to uh, Sequoia National Park where we would camp for a week. And, uh, you know, in tents with, you know, fire every night and going out and hiking around all day long and trying to feed the squirrels and all the things that you do when you're a little kid. And they had so much energy for us and were, you know, I don't know, I would have got a babysitter and, and you know, gone to Las Vegas without us. <laughs> but my parents were good. And, um, and so they just, so... I felt like it was a connection as I was getting older. All my girlfriends loved all that. We, we used to have a thing called Tuesday Girls where we would get together and teach each other what we knew how to make. So whether it was cooking oh. or quilting or knitting, we would just get together and um, one uh, padded fabric covered um, uh, photo frames we made. We did all kinds of things. Every Tuesday we got together and did it until my girlfriend, Diana, uh, got, got to, to, it was her week. And she decided that for her week, she was going to show us how to make margaritas and we would sit by the pool. And so that ended all the good works that we had done. She was ahead of her time. Diana's day one. And that was the end of that. But so it was, it, when I was writing the first book, that was a natural thing for me to talk about. Not only that, but my mother well, we had all of a sudden we had to be feminists by that. By, by when I was 18, that hand on the big, the big hand on the clock went click. And all of a sudden, Gloria Steinem was everywhere. And it was everywhere. It was in Seventeen magazine. It was in Glamour magazine. It was Helen Reddy was singing about it. And Helen Gurley Brown. and Cosmo Helen Barton. Gurley Brown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it was just, it was in our music, in our magazines, it, totally everywhere we looked. Now, interestingly, the boys did not have that. They did not sing, I am woman, hear me roar. In <laughs> fact, they were a little worried about that. And they also <laughs> didn't have, they didn't read Helen Gurley Brown, because I, you know, I don't think, yeah. I don't know, maybe they did. Because um, oh, that yeah, might have been, been. <laughs> they might have thought there was some sex there or something. <laughs> But they, they, you know, they just didn't, they didn't um, get the same messages we did, but they had gotten the same messages we had gotten when we were young. We were supposed to grow up. The man was supposed to be the boss. The girls were supposed to have babies and stay home. And all of a sudden we're at 18. And so a lot of the guys thought it was our idea. They didn't, since they weren't listening to the music and they weren't reading the books and they weren't reading the magazines, they thought it was, my husband thought it was me. <laughs> this was all my idea. And a lot of, and so they weren't like very happy and they didn't know how to, how to deal with yeah. it. It was, yeah. it was a real time of understanding. Time. Yeah. And, um, but you know, when, so when I was writing the book, then I was divorced by this time and I thought about my mother and all the mothers of all my best girlfriends and how they must feel to hear that the thing that they spent their life doing didn't matter anymore. Because that's kind of the message that was out there that yeah. it was diminished for sure. Yeah. You couldn't do that. Now, you know, that's not feminism. Feminism is no. you get to do whatever you want. And that's Voices. and yeah. we, we love everybody, you know, loves everyone for doing the best that they can with what they have in this and world what they choose to do. Yeah. What they choose Voices. To do. Right. But back then, you know, there were a lot more rules. And so I wanted to write this book to tell my mother uh, and thank her for the unbelievable foundation she put under me for my life. And it's still there. I still, I still feel it every day. And my grandmother and, you know, these women who were the, you know, absolute pillars for me growing up, 
So that's it's, really what that was. It's for. um it's really interesting, Susan, that you you've taken everything that you experienced growing up and, and learned from family and home and your mother as a role model. And yet you've made your own independent career out of it. You've melded the two so well. That's yeah. Admirable. Well, it was me, right? I mean, I look at a 20 year olds, like I've, I've sort of like looked at, at the decades and growing up. And when I was in my 20s, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I, I couldn't see anything. And I didn't understand that the job of a 20 year old is to, is to stand there like a magnet and let things attach or not attach try a lot of things and you you just like you'll find this book of quotes and all of a sudden over the years it can open up all kinds of, of of doors for you and and so you are you know when you're 20 years old you're only eight years past 12. you just yeah. do not know yeah. you are a clean you slate know. you don't you know don't who know. you are no. and so but i had some things because you get them in your childhood you you yeah. know you got them from your mother. I had a little tiny bit of cooking. I had a little of this. And I was just waiting for all the other things to come. And your 30s are, you're just barely, I don't really think you start to really come to until you're in your 40s. I you agree. Know? I, I mean, agree. I think being born is such a, uh, a huge thing that you were like reeling for 40 years. <laughs> and yeah. then you start to yeah. wake up after that. And <laughs> it gets better and better, I have to say, and it doesn't stop, okay? That's the good news. There, you, it's all about wow. your curiosity. And I hear a lot of quotes uh, from the old masters who say, you, you know, that you need this and this and this, but what you really need is curiosity. And it's true. I mean, yeah, I, I'm in love with Google and I am oh. on it 75 times a day. Like five Librarians five, here, five, oh five, yeah. <laughs> Who would librarians be without Google these days? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and look at the business you're in. Oh my God, the library, my my home away from home, my in my whole childhood. That's absolutely <laughs> yes. True. Same for same for us. Same yeah. For us. Um, at one point, you decided to write a travel log and then also a biography. Was that difficult, or it, for you to switch from writing the cookbooks, or was it um, kind of organic because of uh, what you were going through um, during those times and um, traveling. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's part of the growing up thing, right? I, I, I grew into cookbooks. I haven't grown out of them, but I have other things that I just rather do more, right? You only have right. so much time. So, and, uh, and, and I wanted to try, I wanted to try this. Well, you know, I had, as I was telling you, I had, I had gone to England in 2006 and kept this diary while I was over there. And I glued some photographs in it, you know, like, and, and I'd handwritten the whole thing. It's not particularly neat. I did some watercolors, but when I got it home, I showed it to my girlfriends and they loved it. And they said, you know, I even put feathers in it. And they Love said, it. why don't you go back and do another one and for us? And, and so that's exactly what I did. And, and so, you know, you've seen a fine romance. It looks so much like this. It's, yes, you know, it does. practically the same thing. And, but, you know, and I, I, it was going to be easy because it's diaries. I've always written diaries and this is just blah, 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 blah. Like I'm talking to you, right? It's just, here's where we went and this is what we saw. And, but, um, and then quotes, <laughs> of course, because that's just makes it so nice. And ties it all together. Yep. Yeah. It ties it all together. And uh, I've got a Shakespeare quote about Southampton that I get to put in in a little surprise I'm doing for the girls who are going on the boat with us. Oh, so uh, nice. I mean, how do you get a Shakespeare quote about Southampton? And that's where the boat lands. So I, I can't remember it anyway right now, but I, I, I just, th there's something for everything. There is something, somebody else has got something for everything. Has said something that fits the moment, the, 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 moment. Moment, the yeah. event. That's yeah. wonderful. That's and, uh, and so I'm like, uh, um, yeah, it's just, it was a natural progression. I went to Little Brown, uh, you know, I was always going to, 
I, I was always, Little Brown wanted more cookbooks and I didn't really want to do more cookbooks. I wanted to do this. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I tried to get them interested in it. And one person, one of the people at Little Brown read, read uh, A Fine Romance and, and called it enchanting, which just sent me to the moon. So I, um, I, I, it made me feel a lot better about it because I didn't know, you know, you never know when you're writing a book, how, how people are going to feel about it. And you just try to do your best. You think, what would I want to know and, and relate to your readers? And so, um, and, you know, but they just, they were, they really wanted a cookbook that was too big of a jump away from what I had been doing. And right. they just thought that, you know, this, so I just had to self-publish it. So Joe and I became Spring Street Publishing and we Fabulous. put it, yep, and then we did it ourselves. And it's, you know, that's been an adventure too, because that's a whole other business. I mean, you have to, you have to order the paper, like we ordered the paper for this book this week, even though it may not come in June, because that's how long it takes to get the paper. You have to know that kind of stuff, you know, you have to uh, plan for shipping and, and you know, uh, storing the books and so forth. So there's a lot. And also, you know, we've gone on a couple cross country um, book signings, which have been absolutely so much fun meeting everybody and seeing everybody. But, you know, um, this COVID has got us oh. trapped here. And, but yeah. at least we don't have to wear masks. Look at us. We're just like face to face with no masks. <laughs> That's the nice thing. Very and nice. The best be thing about that. it is everyone gets to watch this again <laughs> on our YouTube channel. That's true. That's it's not plus just two times. Yeah, that's so the there's positives well, to everything. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we find the silver linings. And I'm yeah. sure we have a quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but so I, I love that. And so I'm going to segue into a fine romance. Um, and I know Nicole had some questions about um, some of your other books, books, but I was so I intrigued when I was reading it. <laughs> And when you were visiting Beatrix Potter's house and how you talked about how you couldn't take any photographs and you said, well, I came prepared. <laughs> Can you just tell us a little bit about that? That sounds so interesting. Yeah, I don't know where that is right now. Too bad I didn't have it here. It's all it is, is, is a piece of lined paper that was in my purse and I had folded it up like my mother used to do when she made her list. So it fit in this little bag I had. And, uh, you know, I... Just, I, I really, I was prepared for anything because I'm always writing stuff down when I'm traveling because, you know, I don't want to miss anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, so, you know, I just had this, this piece of paper in my purse. I just pulled it out and started drawing like she had teapots in the, you know, in the little corner. She had a lot of little, I, I, I drew her bed and then uh, um, what in else? In shoes. You know? and her shoes and her hat and all the little things that I could do when I was in there. And that, but now they let you take pictures. Oh, wow. I finally got used to uh, the fact that, um, yeah, I've been back a few times. We had one of our picnics up in her, in her, uh, she, she bought that house and she stayed in it off and on while she still lived in London. But when she finally really firmly moved to the Lake District, I think it's right about the same time she married her husband. And when she did that, she bought a house across this, uh, it's called Post Office Meadow. And it's just right across. You can see it from, from Hilltop, you can see this house and it's up on kind of on a little rise and it's, it's, it's called Castle Cottage. And a friend of mine, well, she is a friend now, I. You would not believe how we even met because from England, she showed she was here. Okay. And then we had this idea of having a picnic in her yard. She's the one who lives Fabulous. in Castle Cottage now. It just, everything happens like that. You know, I just can't believe how things happen. But, um, and so we ended up having a picnic up there, which was, you know, which was fantastic. Fabulous. But yeah, that, Going there the first time was so great. I mean, I waited a nice long time. I didn't let anybody tell me what it was like. I didn't Google it. I didn't look it up. I just went like, you know, a virgin. <laughs> it was, Enjoy it. Was yes. Wonderful. That's the way to do it. Yeah. 
I just love this book. Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. When I first discovered it, I just, I love the way you write about England and, and you've been to some places that I haven't been, even though I'm English, I've spent so many years in America now. But one of the things I really liked was page 98. You write about hedgerows. And nobody writes about hedgerows. And it's a great thing to write about because they're such a big part of the British Isles. They're everywhere. They're, everyone has a hedge. Everyone has to trim the hedge. Nobody likes trimming the hedge. It's just such a big thing, but they're lovely and they're beautiful and they're artistic. And I just thought it was really wonderful that you'd taken notice of that and, and highlighted that. I thought that was- Oh, wonderful. well, they're just amazing. And they've got all the birds living in them and they use them instead of fences. And they have this yeah. special equipment that works on the side of the road to cut them and clip <laughs> them and keep them perfect. The whole it thing, is like yeah. a park. It's a when huge I, thing. When I meditate in the morning, I have a meditation that I'm listening to now. And, um, and this guy, he's so good and he's got an English accent and he has it me standing on the top of a hill looking over a valley. Well, guess where I am, okay? So I've got that whole picture perfect vision of England in front of me in my meditation in the morning. And I can just smell the history. Honestly, <laughs> I can while I'm in this meditation. It's the most wonderful thing. I can't wait to get back. And uh, and so, yeah, it's, and so the hedgerows are heaven. Everything is heaven. The arched bridges, the going through the dales. I mean, come on, who did that? I, I, and William Morris said in the middle ages, every, every man was an artist and they were. Look at the houses that are all handmade that you still have. Yeah. It is they were just... literally carving out, you know, they were carving out the landscape, literally, yeah. literally. It's, yeah. it's, it's so interesting that you said too, that when you met Joe, you discovered that you both had this love of things English. And that's just, that's so lovely that you're getting to do this now and that you were able to go and visit on your 25th anniversary and you're going again. And it's just wonderful. Just great. Yeah, it, yeah. It we the very first night we spoke to each other, we talked about sailing on the Queen Queen uh, Ashley the Queen Elizabeth, and that was the night that we met. And it and he also when he came over brought a Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers album, and I I I'm the only person I knew who had Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers albums, but here this guy comes. So that was it, right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I knew. yes, indeed. <laughs> also, you've got In a Fine Romance, which, of course, is um, very timely. You, on page 188 is James Herriot. And aren't we all loving All Creatures Great and Small on PBS, right? Loving now? it. Isn't it heavenly? It's, it's just, just it's the Dale. So, you know, it's, I mean, beautiful. Yeah, it it's is. Sunday we, went nights. His, we went to his little town there. He was a pretty, um, you know, pretty, um, you know, quiet person. He didn't really want the world to know who he was. I mean, he's not really even James Harriet. James Harriet, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, but his that little village he was in, we were at the church where he was married, mm -hmm. and you know, very, very charming, wonderful, everything, gorgeous, everything. Yeah, gorgeous. it's just, yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. Yeah. And, and, and yes. if you read, you know, he's just got that charming English way of writing. Do you know what we just listened to? Joe and I listen to books on, uh, you know, Audible every morning as we go when for a walk. You know what we just yeah. listened to that I've <laughs> never heard before? Wind in the Willows. Oh, oh. yeah. No, yeah. goody. Talk about English writers. I read, mean, oh my God, I thought, you know, I don't want to read about a possum or whatever these things are, you know? <laughs> And, and Joe yeah, said, you do. got to, you've got to. He'd read it when he was a child. And so you talked me into it. And, oh, I wanted to move in with them. <laughs> <laughs> you best friends. I know. I haven't read it since I was a child. I should reread that. Oh, God, they've got, they, they live in the best little cozy. They do. You know, they, house they're cozy. In the world. <laughs> yeah. The epitome of cozy is them. It's, you yeah. know, another funny thing, too, is when I first discovered you, I, I think I was in michael's in california in santa monica where i used to live and there were some susan branch stickers in a in one of the yeah. sections i was like oh 
look at these. These are so lovely. And then there was a book of postcards, which some of which I still have. Oh my gosh. That was lovely. And then someone else had said to me that English people love stationery. They love paper and cards and note cards and handwriting and, and they do. And, and, and this is just, I mean, everything that you do is just so perfect that you also love England, which was so perfect for this book. It was just, yeah. it was the nicest book that I've ever seen anybody write about England in this Aww, that's travel guide. So nice. But really, it's really lovely. Absolutely lovely. Lovely gift for everybody. Yeah, yes. I want to send one to the queen. You should. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I think, yeah, you should. I think she could use a little cheer, a little Susan Branch cheering up right now. I hate what she's having to go to that. So I wrote her when I was uh, 11. No, I was 10. <laughs> and I got, I got this back. Okay. So, and <laughs> I've torn off the stamp, but it, then the back of it looks like this. Oh, look at that. You got the royal look at that. And yeah. inside it's torn because of this thing. But right here it says, this belongs to Sue. <laughs> you had to mark everything in my household. And I wrote her and I asked her, you know, I wrote everybody. I wrote everybody because I found out you could, you could get mail that way. So I wrote all the capitals of the world and said, you know, what's Rome like? And they'd send me huge envelopes full of stuff and I would get, you know, you know wasn't, weren't things like, I wrote, when I was in England um, growing up, I wrote, I found this address in the front of a Laura Ingalls Wilder book. And I ended up writing to the publisher and I included a stamp addressed envelope. And of course the stamp wasn't any good because it was coming back from America. But the publisher went back to me and sent me all this stuff with Laura Ingalls Wilder book. Oh, nice. Wonderful. And and yet children don't have any of this anymore. They don't get to do any of this anymore. Oh, I know. I used to have a pen pal in France and yeah, um, exactly. it was fun to learn you know, from each other. Right, and actually write anymore. It's, it's Yeah. It's, and one of the things that for me is to see cursive go away because, you know, yeah. the very first time I ever did any art whatsoever was writing my name. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just hard to make an S for a, yeah. for a four-year-old. Between as lines as and draw yeah. house, right? It's the same thing. You're using the exact same thing. So to take that away from them and just hand them a keypad, uh, you know, I don't, I hope they- I know, it's such a shame. And all the things that you were talking about doing growing up, going camping and just getting together with the Tuesday girls and all these things that so many children just don't do anymore. And it's yes, yeah. you know, well, so this letter, this letter came back to me from the lady in waiting at uh, at Buckingham <laughs> and uh, at Windsor Castle, telling about the birthdays of the kids and so forth, because those are the questions that I ask, such intelligent questions. And uh, but that's another thing they're missing because they're not getting there. You know that I have a basket full of my favorite letters that I've gotten over my lifetime, and I, me too. I, you know, yeah. I treasure them. My mother's letters. Oh my God, my grandmother. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, but we can, we can. Quote books can awaken people to things they might not have ever even really thought about, and it may be one of those magnetized things that sticks on them. And they may might make a whole life out of it that we don't even know. Absolutely. So parents to teach yeah. the kids more, be, to give them more of a life than just go to work, make money. And um, screens. It, well, yeah, absolutely. You've got to do it, but it could be something you love. Like you guys are obviously are doing what you love. So, and we need you. We are. We need you. Thank you. So don't even we try. We need you. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're so we're in it together. Yes. <laughs> Very mutual. Yes. And all those, <laughs> and those booksellers out there and the publishers and. Yeah. Everyone. Of course. All the, the great readers. Yeah. I bet. So I'm busy. I wanted to get to some of the questions. We have so many questions. Um, so. Someone asked, is your orig original cottage close to you? Who lives there now? Okay, so this little house that I bought on uh, uh, when I first moved here is just about, well, my cat, when, I, when we moved in here, used to walk home to it. So that, that'll Aww. tell you something. He wasn't giving it up as quick as, as I did. Um, 
and I haven't really in my heart given it up at all. I dream about it and I'd love to have it back. There's a woman who lives in it. She knows I want it if she ever leaves. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I don't know if she's ever gonna, who's gonna leave first, me or her? And uh, so, because she, it's a perfect house. It's got a downstairs bedroom where this one doesn't. And, you know, it has a lot of, uh, it's just, and it's out a little further out, out of town. I live like walking distance to the post office, which is great. Yeah, Better it's good. Yeah. Car all the time. So I'm, I'm really happy we found this house. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a good house. Yeah, it's, it's good old too. It's got ghosts. Can you hear the ghosts around the fireplace? Because this is where they hang out quite a lot. Oh. Mm. Mm. Are they there even when the fireplace is not lit? Are yeah, they there? they're always here. Uh -huh. they, you know, the people who lived here from 1949 to 1980 had four children. And sometimes when I'm working in my studio, which is right over there, I almost hear like them running around upstairs. Children running, oh, yeah. Wow. It, it usually wow. turns out to be the cat, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you like to think it is your like friendly and like ghost. <laughs> Yeah. Good energy. It's good energy anyway. Yeah. They put yeah. such a mark on this house. We've lived here slightly longer than they did. We've lived here. We moved here in 1989. So we've, uh, we've, it's, it's, you know, it, it goes from one family to the next. It's, yeah, it was, it's nice. It was 1849. So that's wonderful. Wow. Build your own history. Yeah. So that's someone probably. also asked, will you ever make a small autumn book like Christmas Joy? I've got Christmas joy right here. <laughs> that's a good idea. I never thought about that. Yeah, that's that's a neat idea. Maybe, maybe in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely. Christmas joy is lovely. It's a sweet fun. little, it's a sweet it little is. book. Yeah, it's a really nice. Yeah. Little Brown liked those little books. Yeah. You <laughs> like those little books. Yeah, we do. Um, are you planning on offering the full moon bookmarks like in the past? Just love them yeah. as I'm sure others do too. Yeah. This I, is someone from um, Southern California who had written in. And okay. I downloaded joining them, us today. Yeah. Hi, California. Oh, um, I did. I did put it up uh, in December. You just have to go back on the blog. It's there. You can click on it and the full oh, moon great. bookmark. It's there. Okay. And, for, and it's got all the full moons for 2022. So, oh, perfect. Good. I'm glad I you asked that. that question because now mm -hmm. I can say to everybody. Yeah. And, and um, somebody just asked, I saw something about, uh, oh, the movie. You know, yeah. three books are, are, are uh, you know, there's someone out there shopping them to make a movie out of them, particularly Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams. And we did actually get an offer from Hallmark but they were going to turn it into something that wasn't Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams because they have oh. their rules. And so, um, so I gratefully, gratefully, and, you know, felt very honored that they even asked, uh, said no, because I wanted to do it either right or not at all, which there is another quote that says, watching your book uh, get uh, made into a movie is like watching your ox get made into bullion cubes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some writer said that. So yeah, I think that's probably what it is. Yeah. But anyway, yep. In fact, the gal who's is doing the shopping for it just wrote me tonight. She has, you know, she wants to renew the the shopping, whatever it is. Yeah, on, you have you um option, the option for option. it. That's the right word. Yep. And um, and she wants to renew that. And so, you know, there's always a chance. You know? And there's so many, there's so many more production companies and independents out there now. It, it, you'll, you'll, you'll know when the right offer comes along. For sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I just, uh, I, I want it to be, uh, you know, original and wonderful and interesting. And it's yours. It's yours. It's yeah. your story. It's yeah. Rightly so. so. Yeah. 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 Well, that was. Sorry, the, the garage door is opening. That's what happens with Zoom. <laughs> Things happen, life Things happen. <laughs> so Susan, someone asked, what keeps you going uh, with your creative endeavors? What keeps me going? Well, oatmeal and blueberries and apples and <laughs> in the morning. And, uh, I, you know, I've just got it. I've just got that in my heart. You know, I just want to, I just, I just wake up and I'm excited about every day and 
you know, I just, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day. Time is my biggest problem. If I had more time, I have so many ideas and, you know, and the older you get, right. the braver you get, because you realize, you know, why not? And so I've gotten much braver than I was when I was younger. And I just want to go, go, go and do, do more and more and more before, you know, before it's too late. And, um, and so great attitude. Uh, that's what going. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It is. Those are the nice things about growing older, I think. Oh, yes. there's so many yeah, good things so. about it. There really there are. are. There really yeah. are. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And um, I don't know if you touched upon this earlier, but someone asked, how did your style develop? I mean, I know you talked about how you've been doodling like since you were young, but how did your style develop? You know, now you said the right word before organically. I don't really even know. I mean, I just know what was I was interested in. I mean, my very first painting is hanging in the other room and all it is is a is a picture of a geranium and it, it's got a lot of white paper around it. It's very simple and it's sort of like, you know, I, I got into an actual lawsuit back in, the, in about 1988 with Pepperidge Farm because- oh. Oh, they came along and wanted to do me to do ads and I did a bunch for them and then they ended up dumping me and having somebody copy my handwriting and do huge double paid ads for the New York Times and so forth. So because I was young and you know I and and didn't know any better I I I actually had went to a lawyer and took him to court which was just awful. But I did win, although, you know, they have it fixed so that all you win is enough to pay for your clothes to go to court yeah. and the hotel yeah, room so. in, in New York, because that's where it was. And um, but, you know, they had an expert there, uh, an expert from a museum who described my style. I don't know why they had her, but they did. And she said I was a master of the white space. OK, that was the first I knew of it. But it's true. I love white. I love the white. I love to give things a little bit of space. And so it has something to do with that. I really don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I was born, born that way, as, as they say. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, it just all came the way, you know, it was supposed to. Yes. And I, I love the way you lay out all your um, pages. They're all very soothing. Beautiful. They are. They are. Yeah. Helen and I were saying that when we were flipping through the books, how comfortable and we could we said we could sit down all day and just look through your books and read quotes, yes. tea, mm -hmm. you know, read quotes and drink tea and drink tea and take that <laughs> quotes. <laughs> drink tea and read quotes. Yeah. <laughs> so someone asked, what is the name of so I'm gonna put two questions into this. Um, what is the name of your quote book that you held up? And will there be a chance to pre-order your new book? Um Will we, we, will we be able to get signed copies? Oh boy. So uh, the, the new book, well, I've got three names and I don't know which one to do. So it's either going to be Distilled Genius. You guys tell me which one I should do. Distilled Genius, or you can leave comments on the blog, okay? <laughs> Distilled Genius or The Secrets of Life or what's the other one? Oh, I forget what the other one was. But it's got to say quote book on the front. I mean, even if it says distilled genius, I think it needs to say quote book because otherwise somebody's going to look yeah. at that and not know what it is. So yeah. distilled yeah. genius, a book of quotes or something like that. But in reason I call it distilled genius is obvious, right? You get that. Yeah, I think so. Because it's in a quote book, you get all the genius in together. It's like boy. I like distilled the genius. Distilled yeah. genius. Or, you know, secrets of life, but one or the other. So, and it will be, uh, uh, I'll put it up for pre-sales just as soon as I kind of get it just a, f a little bit further along, you know, it's not going to come until June. And so, but I don't know how many to order and it really helps me know how many to order if, if I do pre-order so that I will definitely do that. And um, the third question was, I think uh, what was the name of the quote book that you held up? Oh, uh, the first student. One? I thought she was talking about your quote book, but they were talking about Bartlett's. the quote book in the beginning. Bartlett. yeah. Bartlett's familiar quotations, but I have to say it's not the best. The best. There's so many good ones now. There's just wonderful quote books out there. there so look at them all. This is good, but it has a lot of. 
you know, like Marcus Tullius Cicero, how long, Catiline, will you abuse our patients? Okay, that doesn't matter to me. And, you know, but, uh, you know, <laughs> the Ides of March have come. So I like, but there's a lot, there's, you know, you still want, you still want the old stuff, definitely want the old stuff, but there's better collections now. It's, and yeah. there's so many. So just so go to many. the store and, and uh, you know, you'll find all kinds of wonderful ones. Go yeah. to the store. Yeah. Or yeah. go to the yeah. library. Do you go guys to the have library. library. Go visit us at the library. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is something that I'm interested. Someone said, any books you recommend to help practice with lettering skills? Well, interesting. I should have those with me too. In my studio, I've, you know, I just love lettering. So I'll rip things out of magazines if I see something that I like. Uh, but, uh, but I also have a lot of old school books that, you know, they're, they show lettering in inside. And, um, but, you know, uh, there must be you could probably Google lettering and get all kinds of ideas. I, I, my handwriting, the, the handwriting that's in the books is my handwriting. I mean, I can write really messy too, but that, that, that's my careful handwriting, but it is my handwriting. It just came with me. I didn't uh, take a class or it's not a calligraphy thing or anything. No, so, it's just naturally um, yours. Yeah. It's just, yeah. My handwriting. So I did win that lawsuit, by the way, and because because it, it was my handwriting. Uh, will Susan be making more of her beautiful mugs or any new pottery? Yeah, I I will make some more mugs. It's getting harder, as you probably right now. Know. Yeah, it, it's so difficult getting things from England now. I used to be able to sell, send it air freight. They doubled, no, tripled the prices of air freight. And um, so we had to send the last group of cups by ship. And that was like months and late and, you know, and, but it, it, it got here and it, they were in good shape when they got here. So uh, that was this one, this blessed cup came that yeah, way. Yeah, the mugs are lovely. Very and nice. this was the first time we had to send it by, yeah, we had to send it by boat. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, uh, I definitely am gonna do more because there's still more to do. So I'll let you know. It takes a little while to get them. So if I did one today, it probably wouldn't come until obviously probably June, the way things are going. So we'll see. Someone asks, will you be finishing Enchanted? Yeah, I've got it in there and I want to finish it. And I got such good stuff in it that I haven't even told anybody about because I don't, I wanted to save it for the book. Uh, but I've just, I, everything from breaking my wrist, which I did a couple of years ago, to this COVID. And then I was so busy eating last winter that I didn't have time to work on a book. I was, you know, it's just, just eating my way through the first winter of COVID and uh, sleeping. And so, um, yeah, I want to get back to it. I hope I do. We'll see. We'll see how, what time allows. That's the problem. And we yeah, I made um, puzzles and... Would you be likely to to go out and do any um, book events, depending on how things are, obviously, with COVID and the pandemic? Would you? You know, I heard something about COVID that somebody said, and I don't know if it's going to be true or not. So, you know, this is just, but I loved it so much that I'm going to tell you and let's just pretend it's true. Somebody said that it's going to go away and that's the last we're going to see of COVID. Okay. Oh my God, that made me so happy for like three days straight. So I'm going with that. And, uh, and if that happens, yes, we will absolutely go back out again. And maybe we'll even, what we'll do is maybe we'll go to four different parts in the country and have a picnic in every part. And that oh, way that'd like, be wonderful. people could meet each other too, you know, something yes. like that. I yeah. don't know. That, that would be wonderful. That'd be lovely. Yeah, that is wonderful. Um, we are going to stay on and answer more questions, but I want to be respectful of other people's time. So if you do have to leave, because we did say it was going to run till eight, this program is going to be recorded or is being recorded rather, and will be posted to the library's YouTube channel once it has been edited. And with that, we're going to continue with questions because we have the Zoom platform until 830. So if you would like to stay, um, oh. we'll get more questions answered, if that's okay with you, Susan. 
I love it. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, great. So the next question is, I know your book was translated into Chinese. Have any of your books been translated into other languages for other countries? Nope. Chinese was the just some somebody from China at a at a uh, an agent called me and asked if they could do it, and of course I loved it. And yes, and so and it's so cute. Where is it? I think it's right there. <laughs> it is so wonderful. Look at this. But what's wow. even better is they did a fantastic job inside. Look at this. Wow. Now, and you know, they managed yeah, that's art. Gorgeous. Now, you see the first letters that I painted, they don't have anything to do with Chinese, but they left them there right. because it's art. They, you know, that's how, and it makes that. it, it makes the whole book adorable. What I really love is in the beginning where Joe and I are talking about driving on the wrong side of the street. So they, it's just, uh, it's- Oh just, yes, that was funny. That was funny. I've never- yeah, and, that and look at them. They've even got the little words coming out. Let's see. Can you see the words coming out of the car? Yeah, the bubble. <laughs> yes, adorable. Yeah, they did a great job. So I sent one of these to the library up there. I don't, I never heard anything back from them, but I hope they put oh. it in there. Yeah. So, do you feel like all your siblings shared your positive attitude about a positive memory, about positive memories and not to resent all these kids? You got eight kids, right? So you got eight, eight totally different people and, and everybody had a different experience. And, and my sister, who's really, really uh, close to me, Shelly, she's 14 and a half years younger than me. We grew up in different houses. I had the youngest parents in the world. Hers were old. Uh, relatively, they were in their thirties. Um, <laughs> they had, you know, they had, yeah. uh, they, they, we, we did not live in the same houses. Every the whole time I was uh, growing up, there was a new baby all the time. The whole time she was growing up, everybody was moving out of the house. I moved out of the house when she was four. So it was just a totally different experience. And it, it's even true, you know, for the middle kids and, and so forth. Yeah. And like, I knew my, my, my first two brothers very well and slowly, but surely once I moved out of the house, I was goodbye. Right. I was a, you know, a, a yeah. Major and I was on the road, I was going to go off and see the world and so forth. So, you know, and they were still going to school and doing their thing. So I didn't really get to be close to them when they were growing up. So we all have different experiences of what, but we all have, I would say, we all have the happy gene where we wake up positive and everybody is very creative. They're creative in different ways. My brothers uh, can fix anything. That's basically, you know, yeah. they can do anything, build any house, they can do anything with their hands. Uh, they're good to have, you know, if you're on the Titanic, you'd want to be with one of my brothers. <laughs> yeah, they, can, they can get you out of tight spaces. So yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. Is there any chance you'll write a win winter and or spring cookbook? My collection somehow feels incomplete. <laughs> well, I kind of think that Christmas has a lot of winter in it. There's houses in the snow in there. So I, I feel like Christmas has, uh, you know, Christmas is sort of winterish and spring, uh, you know, summer has a lot of spring in it too. So I'd love to, uh, the book that, you know, I have like besides Enchanted, which is, uh, the, the, uh, our last trip to England and a lot of different stuff besides that, um, uh, I have like three other books that I would really like to write. So, you know, I have to just, you know, just figure out how to get it done. I did not want to not have these quotes out there. That was, you know, that's why that one is happening right now, because, you know, it needs to be, it needs, it needs to be, this book needs to be in every high school. That's what I think, because I just think kids really need to be able to see. And, and it's, and again, it's timely. I think it's, the timing is very good for something like that right now. I don't know how to get it into every school, but I, I, I'm, I'm just going to start saying that. And I do talk to lots, of, I'm sure there's lots of teachers I'm talking to right this minute who, uh, you know, maybe they'll just sneak it into their library. A way will be found. Yeah, a way will be found. Where there's a will, <laughs> there's a way. That's my mother's quote. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> will you do any local book signings in Massachusetts? I'm sure I will. I, I am doing a lot of Zoom right now because, you know, obviously that's our reason, that's the way we do it. But I love to go do libraries in person, which I do, you know, and uh, both both on the Cape and here and around and books, bookstores. And if somebody invites me, I'm pretty much going to go. So, you know. We'll invite you when uh, in person yeah, yeah. comes back. We'll invite okay. you. For sure. Yeah, I'd love it. That'd be great. <laughs> Lexington, you guys are about getting ready there to have your big uh, uh, Patriots Day parade and and the re reenactment and the Revolutionary War. And outside we're supposed our door. to go. Uh, we're right outside the door. It's we're supposed to go. We're supposed to go, and we're supposed to. We get to sit on those bleachers, I guess, because we know somebody who's uh, the Grand Marshal for this thing. And oh, uh, you have to like, let us know. Somebody, we haven't really met them yet. But they're they're just we've kind of connected through I don't know even know where, and uh, and so um, you know I mean the Revolutionary War is just my cup of tea I can't wait to to see this we visited there uh, a couple of uh, well probably two years ago and uh, walked all around and and uh, really went out out to the bridge you know where they where the firing took place out there yeah. Yeah, in Concord, maybe I don't know. Yeah, between the two. Yeah. Between oh, two. yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. You'll have to let it us know wonderful. when you're when yeah. you're You'll have to come visit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So great. someone wants to know, when did you first learn about and I may not be saying this right rabbit rabbit. I for, for I forgot Carol yeah. from Connecticut is asking. That so question. rabbit rabbit is a uh, something that's both English and American. I ended up looking it up to find out where, where it came from. It's both American and English. And it's, you, some people say, oh, they say rabbits. And some people say there's something else, but it is, it's, it's just something you're supposed to say at the first thing out of your mouth, the first day of every month to give you white rabbits, white rabbits, white rabbits. That's it. You say, yeah, you're supposed to say it before you, first day of the month, like if you get up past midnight to go to the bathroom or something late at night, you don't say it then. Because you're you supposed to say that. <laughs> the first yeah. Day. And then you get good luck for the whole month. Yeah. So. A friend of mine and I do it. We all, we're always doing the white rabbit. And she's- We do it too. We, we do, do it too. White my, girlfriend, yeah. my girlfriend texts me every, she never forgets. And she texts me some sort of a little, you know, two little rabbits, Touching to noses you. or slippers. Yeah. Very <laughs> That's what we want, rabbit slippers. Yeah, I'll have to do that too. <laughs> oh, so do you plan to do a book about your trip to beautiful Ireland? See, that's in Enchanted. Enchanted has Ireland, and I was putting Scotland in there too. So, you know, oh, every time I think about it, I really want to do it so much. It's just everything is ready. I mean, it's, it's so done that I kept a diary the whole time I was over there, big fat diary. Cause we were actually there for four months. That was well, yeah, really a big long trip. trip. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, uh, and so, you know, I want to, yes, Ireland was great. Galway Bay. That's <laughs> where we were. Did you get down Lovely. to Dingle at all? I've we been there. We didn't get to Dingle and we should have, but it just, you know, you get, too caught up where you are and it was just no matter where we went we're just you know our big thing was to see um the quiet man um where quiet man was filmed that's john wayne more you know hair and if you haven't seen it you really 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 should okay the quiet man john yeah, wayne, another more movie. Yeah. Put it, write it down and don't okay we're gonna it. write it down love it write that down. oh we have it we have it in the library we have a good movie collection. oh you're gonna love it you're gonna love it it's so good <laughs> And, uh, and so we wanted to see where that was filmed. And, you know, we, so we did stuff like that. We, we, we had a whole bunch of friends join us. I mean, it was a wonderful How trip. fun. How yeah, fun. That's great. I know you also had a love of Gladys Tabor as I do. Did you ever meet her? No, no, no. She was gone, you know, by the time I discovered her, that was another book that was in the little house was, was uh, Best of Still Meadow was in there. And, uh, and you know, she was gone then, but I've been to her house and got to sit with her granddaughter and, uh, um, you know, really 
loved, you know, saw the whole house and everything. And, and definitely it was just exactly the way she talked about it. such an old place it was, I think 1690 or something like that. It's in Connecticut. So it was great. Someone commented, please, please, please make a wall calendar with pockets. Pockets, pockets. Where would the pockets go in the front and the back or? Along, uh, I've seen calendars Maybe on the bottom. In the front. Yeah, yeah the front the, and the bottom. The front, at the bottom, okay. Well, you know, I'm not in charge. I'm so sorry about, you know, calendars, but I work for a, another company. What I do is I, I design the calendar, I do the calendar, but I do it for them. So they tell me what they want and how they want, what format they can use and how they want it, you know, the Maybe size the and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't get to get to, but I can, I can definitely suggest it. I can say, Hey, you have a calendar with pockets I can do. <laughs> people want pockets. <laughs> yes. yes. People want pockets. <laughs> definitely. Um, so there's a comment. Just wanted you to know my dear cousin made your homemade marshmallows for me for my birthday, January 1st. And I'll never eat another store-bought one again. <laughs> I must, I must learn how to make them also. They're so easy. And you know, it's so funny because uh, I wrote, when I wrote about them, I said, you know what the difference between a, a garden tomato in the middle of summer and a tomato in the middle of winter from the supermarket, that, that difference, it's the same with homemade marshmallows. They're so different and yeah, they're wonderful. And happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> somebody, somebody just asked, I saw if I would ever retire and- yeah. uh, uh, you know, I'm going to have to do something in order to get something else done around here. That's the problem. I'm going to have to like, because it's just <laughs> not enough time. And I, I'd so much rather be in my studio than doing what needs to be done. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do both, but I'm, I'm uh, probably just keep doing what I'm doing. Well, we'll and be so, happy. Everyone yes, be happy. we will be. And so someone asked this question, Will you ever move away from Martha's Vineyard? You've mentioned leaving to go back to California. I, for one, don't want you to leave Martha's Vineyard because Nicole and I are going to come visit you when the yeah, we're coming started. to visit you. Love, yeah, I love right. it. You are invited. <laughs> come, come see me. Um, no, no, I'm not going back to California. I kind of split my time up there from uh, around 2001 until about 2009, and I was a lot out there. And I was back and forth, but still I was a lot out there, a lot more than I had been before. And California, uh-oh, I forgot. I'm talking to a whole bunch of people, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I may back you up because I lived in California too, so. Yeah, and it's just that it's, you know, without four seasons, it's just like we get a big, it's almost like fireworks go off every every three months to change the season whereas I in agree. California, that though that's you're missing four times well, of fireworks a seasons year. bring out so much in us Seas oh they do they yeah do. they really do they it's really just do. cozy and, and that's it and you have this great thing where in the summertime you're outside and it's festive and it's wonderful and it's and then in the winter you come in and you have christmas parties inside and cuddle around the sofa you and wear your scarves and you wear your scarves and, yeah. and you mush yeah. in and 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 people wear velvet here you know they wear velvet <laughs> little velvet shirts whereas in california there's no velvet and every party i went to out there all the men were wearing beige bermuda shorts and that's really it I just, you just, <laughs> you just can't go, you just can't go there that long. But so, you know, but I'm a, I'm an East coast, even my friends out there always thought I was an East coast person. I've always yep. had this, yep. this leaning and, and, and I learned a lot in those, in those years that I was going back and forth. And really that's it. I, I just can't live without the turn of seasons. It's just, I think not. there's something about the, the, the seasons as well, but I also, for, for me, I, I feel much more connected. Maybe it's because the East Coast is closer to Europe and home for me. But right. I, don't know, I feel more in touch with everything on the East Coast, too. Right. Well, it's a whole different thing. It, it is. It really it's is. Huge. It's a different culture. And, you know, it, we may be it all is. one country, but, you know, it's just different everywhere. 
you know, same as in the South is a whole nother culture and in the, in the, in the Midwest, in the North, you know, and that's what's great. That's what's so fun about traveling around and seeing everything. And don't get me wrong, I adore California. That is my yeah. You know, that's the land of my birth, and 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 I have lots beautiful, of beautiful, so many beautiful out. places. Yeah, I, I, I will say one of my favorite. I have to just throw this in really quickly because there are so many people listening from California. But Cambria, which is right in the oh, center of the coast, right? Yeah, heavenly. I lived in San Luis Obispo. Heavenly. So I was up to Cambria all the time. There used to be a tea part, a tea house there that was like one of the nicest. The tea cozy. It was called the tea yeah. cozy. It's not there. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Oh, it's. I was. It, it's gone. Oh. Wasn't it great? It was, it was really lovely. Great. The tea oh, cozy. Lovely. Oh, I was hoping you would say it was still there. My son. Yeah. Is well, there's a lot of them in San Diego. Yeah, and Coronado, and so it's, yeah, there's so many beautiful places in California. Yeah, and yeah. The, just the whole coastline is it's just fantastic, yeah. and and you know, and when we go out there in the middle of winter, oh, I just feel like I've escaped jail. So that is so true. Is yeah. There that is so definitely something to be said for everywhere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. time flies. We have time for one more question. Okay. Um, and it's one that I'd be curious to know about. What is your favorite book, if that's possible? Okay. So, I mean, of course, Heart of the Home is my baby. It's my first one. It's this one. And in fact, it, it had an anniversary, it had a 30th anniversary. So wow. I redid the cover and I put a whole bunch of new uh, recipes in it. And so it's, it's you know, it looks just like it used to, but it's it's just newer because everybody's has gotten old and yellow and covered with cookie batter. So uh, <laughs> that's, cause that's my baby. And then I, you know, Vineyard Seasons, I, I like pretty much too, you know, just it's got a, um, you know, all of the, 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 the trilogy are, you know, they're actually my, my very favorites, but then the child gets to be my other favorite. <laughs> but have you read a gentleman from Moscow or a gentleman in Moscow? Have you read it? Right. A couple of times and I could love it. Quite, love it. Uh, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. And the new book, mm -hmm. book too. We're, we're reading that. We yes. just started the new book. The Lincoln the kids, Highway. The kids, yeah. Those other kids he was in jail with just showed up at the house. I'm very worried. I'm very, very worried. I don't want to <laughs> kill that little boy. That's what I'm afraid they're going to do. So, <laughs> but yes, a gentleman in Moscow is, was is apparently being made into a movie with Tom. That's Hattie. what I heard. That's what I but heard. We're waiting, we're waiting. Yeah. I think it's yeah. been you know delayed with everything else. Yeah, I don't know if course. they could even do what the author Amor Tolls did with words. I don't know if you could do it visually. I'm it's, sure that it's yeah. be gorgeous. And Very wordy so, book, yeah. So yeah. much charm, so mm -hmm. much charm. Yeah. Well, yeah. there it is. That's uh, Susan's, uh, one of Susan's favorite books. So whoever <laughs> asked that question, <laughs> you should go and borrow that book from the library. Yeah. <laughs> and read it. <laughs> So we are out of time and um, I just wanted to thank you, Susan, for a, such an enjoyable evening um, and we oh, nice. had so much fun getting to know you and I hope everyone had a um, good time this evening. Um, stay warm. Thank you. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole, for co-hosting with me. It was so Life. fun to be with you guys. Nicole Pleasure. And it was it was just terrific. It was wonderful to meet you. Thank you. And thank you. Everybody out there, thank you guys. I'll see you on the blog and I'll, I'll see you on the boat and, uh, you know, love you. Love you very much.